Hey everyone, this is Giacomo Vaccari and I'm here today uh, recording a probably the first of a series of tutorials for my Mario 64 code that released about a year ago. Uh, if you are here, you probably know about this. I made uh, some Mario 64 uh, kind of like clone uh, when I was uh, doing my uh, apprenticeship with John Romero and uh, he mentioned, uh, well, if you want to prove that you're really good at gameplay controls, a uh, good way of doing it is doing Mario 64 because it's such a great, uh, it, it has such great gameplay, right? And uh, the video that I released uh, talking about how, uh, what features I have implemented of Mario in my, uh, in my prototype or um, I guess uh, demo um, has received an amazing um, reception, honestly. Uh, it's quite humbling that so many people want a tutorial about this because uh, you know I kind of like take it for granted. Um, but uh, yeah, so there's been I guess a few dozen people have, have asked for tutorials, even like send me emails about it, which uh, implies that you guys have searched for my email, which is pretty cool. So um, and yeah, so I've promised a few of you guys that I would eventually make this uh, tutorial or that I would release the code I intend on doing both uh, but uh, looking at the code is probably very useful if you already have a good understanding of how uh, game development works and what the thought process of a game designer is and all of that uh, well in this case a gameplay designer more than game designer uh, but um, you just and that in that case you just want to see the code and look at the specifics but for some of you guys who are a little bit more, more amateur or more starting uh, in your career or beginners or whatever, um, it might be useful to actually go through the pro thought process of how, uh, you know, a uh, professional game designer thinks about these things. And um, so that's why I'm here uh, recording this for you guys. I already recorded, uh, I did one try last weekend and uh, well, for you, all who don't know, which is probably most of you, I am pro a professional game designer, so most of the time I'm not allowed to make these videos either because uh, contract stuff, you know, uh, the game industry is, uh, doesn't look very happily on people working for a big company and then releasing their own stuff, uh, which I think is a little bit stupid in this case, you know, because it's like, who cares about these things, you know, it's not like I'm competing against my company or something. But also a lot of times I'm just busy, you know, like trying to figure out how to do all the things and move forward from this thing, right? Uh, that being said, so I spent like an hour uh, making it, making a video about it. And I realized it was going to take super long, like much more than an hour. So this is going to be uh, separated into, I don't know, two, three, four parts, something like that. It's going to be about two hours, I guess. So today I'm going to record this first part. We're gonna go over a few of the mechanics and little by little I will release new parts and you know, you guys will get to see the whole process, um, kind of like how I go about it and like, you know, like, uh, oh yeah, that's another thing, another disclaimer is that I haven't looked at this code until that moment that when I was making that one hour video last weekend in like a year. So I have no idea what's going on down there um, I mean, I know how I code and I know my own style and all of that, obviously, but um, uh, there might be some surprises. I actually know that one of the math things that I'm going to show you guys later, I don't remember why I did it that way. And I have to sit down and understand what I did there. Uh, but the point is that uh, we're going to go over this together. Um, so you'll have to excuse me if at some point I'm like, OK, let's figure out what this is doing, because I don't remember exactly, you know when you make code a year ago and you work professionally in games and you're always coding so uh, you'll have to excuse that anyway without more uh, delay let's uh, kind of get into the gist of it I assume that you've looked at the um, at the um, video that I made originally about the controls so showing all the features and all that stuff if you haven't please do uh, go do so because uh, I'm not gonna be repeating myself uh, here as much as I can uh, because we need to move forward this is gonna be a long one so um, yeah please do that and um, let's get started 
So first few basic things here is uh, you might notice that this is obviously not Mario. This is a robot that I got from the marketplace. Uh, and I'm using a small trick here uh, that has, um, uh, let's see. Yeah, this is the guy. So uh, I'm using a small trick for the mesh because the original um robot doesn't look at all like mario proportion wise as you can see i changed the material obviously quite simple not the point of this uh of this um tutorial but you know just here but as you can see the proportions are quite different and one of the tricks that i like to use uh, for this kind of things for example for making chibi mode uh, in some games is this so transforming bones in the animation blueprint to um, kind of like change the look so we could play like this <laughs> and it doesn't look like mario at all but uh, the point is that this doesn't change anything this is just a mesh you know and like uh, some very basic animations in fact had i had more time i would have done it a lot more uh, in detail i think this was like two afternoons at uh, uh, John Romero uh, at uh, Romero Games uh, Ireland, of course, uh, Brenda Romero is a founder as well, as well so um, uh, Shout out to both of them because they're two of my favorite people in the world So um, and of course the opportunity they gave me is uh, you know <laughs> Couldn't ask for anything else anyway, so Just transform the bones the head and the root so the root make him smaller and the head make it bigger So you get that kind of like chibi look to it um so as you see nothing special but that's how i got it i'm guessing you could do this and begin play on the uh on the um blueprint probably of the class you know but whatever um probably um okay when it comes to like the ending graph very simple stuff you know like uh, uh jumping and falling but this is not really nothing crouching moving while crouching actually that's not animated it could be huh i wonder if i do this if it's gonna do it huh so i guess i shouldn't have taken that off for some reason it's uh taken off there and just walking around sliding so this is uh for when there's um, a slope such like this so obviously that's not gonna be well I guess you could go to other things from here but since you, you would just like uncheck the slide and boolean anyway uh, yeah so anyway animation blueprints are not the purpose of this um, of this tutorial either but as you can see it's tremendously easy super super easy maybe just this one is kind of interesting that you can, can go from jump to crouch jump into crouch and that is probably i don't remember now but probably to do this yeah so if you um pummel i guess but yeah you could probably be fine without doing that anyway so into the interesting parts of the thing like i said <coughs> i haven't looked at this in a very long time myself so um let me get closer to the microphone uh, so i haven't looked at this in a long time myself so we're just gonna start by the basics and move on from there obviously the game mode is um mm -mm. <laughs> right so i don't have a game mode let us see mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Let's see if it, there's anything here. Nothing. Cool. Okay. So, do we have a default game mode? Probably. Yes, there we are. So, first things first game mode. Nothing special. Just a normal player controller. I'm not using the game, the player controller to do controls. You could. Uh, it's up to you. I mean, in this case, we're just gonna use one character, so who cares? 
um, third person character is the default one there we go that's what we care about so we have this uh, this player start here Okay, cool. Nothing interesting here. Now, let's start here. Let's look first on how I initialize the character, if anyway. Ha, huh, wow, what a mess. Mm -mm -mm -mm. This doesn't seem very important, honestly. Yes, plus two. That's gonna be false when you start beginning play, is it not? Yes. So we reset the jump. Okay, we're gonna get here later. This is gonna be important later. So uh, we don't need to look at this right now. Input, first input. Well, we've looked at uh, begin play. Let's look at what's happening on tick. Mm -hmm. This shouldn't really be here. It should probably be here. Not that it matters, but you know, you want to keep things a little bit cleaner than I did. I was in a hurry when I did this. It was two afternoons, you know, so I was just like kind of trying to show this to John, you know, like, you know, like see if he liked it more than anything, you know, so. Um, <coughs> okay, so I like to always start creating things by adding two things to my um, characters, which is first an arrow to know what's forward because Unreal has the bad. Uh, this bad habit, but uh, of you know rotating things. I would like to have so in local the X is this way, but in uh, the world is not the same. So whatever, not important. Uh, so I like to have an arrow that shows forward in my character. So if I break anything, I still know what forward is. Now you may see here. So, I mean, this is just the camera boom, nothing special. We're going to talk about this later because I do change this a lot uh, in real time. The follow camera, nothing special, perspective, blah, blah. Uh, I think it has no collision um, on the camera boom. It's not doing uh, collision tests. Um, you could. Uh, there's a good reason why I don't do that. I'll show later. Anyway, uh, so this direction control that is uh, right now here. I like to put it on the floor usually. I don't know why I didn't do that this time, but hmm. so it's not visible. Let's see why. Visible, there. Right. So this direction control arrow that you see there is a small habit that I have to kind of like figure out what my input is being compared to actually where the character is moving because we're in a 3d world so like and our inputs are kind of like relative to the screen in a way but also depends how the camera is moving and all this stuff uh, you might think about it in different ways so i just kind of like want to know what th the character is thinking or like where my inputs are actually showing the thing right so for that purpose i like to put an arrow and um, I like to have this function that I'm gonna see where I have it probably on tick. I'm gonna jump tick, yes. Yep, 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 yep. Let's see, desired direction, no, but that's not where I'm doing it. Okay, ah, so it's right in high inside here. As long as I call this function for any reason, during tick, which is always going to happen here because there's no uh, there's no bifurcation of order of things or whatever. This is always going to get called this desired direction function because so we can uh, check here what's going on. Excuse me one second. Um, and this desired direction is going to rotate that arrow, but not only that. Um, so it's going to compare, we have move right and move forward, these are axes, right? So this is where you put in your input, uh, as usual, I believe this is standard, I didn't change anything probably, maybe I did, but 
unlikely yeah i don't think i changed anything because i wouldn't put this myself so it just comes with move forward move right right but that move forward move right is relative to the camera so let me put it let's see so this is top down right this is my character and um, so let's say the camera is looking this way when i move forward or back it's relative to the camera not relative to the actual character so if now i move my camera i rotate my camera my camera rotates like this let me check this will be forward this will be left and this will be right and so on so it's all related to how the camera um where the camera is looking right is that right let me think for a second yes this is the standard behavior that's right so basically the standard behavior let's look here right 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 exactly i'm sorry this is so obvious but um but sometimes you have to like take a second to think what's going on so when you press forward you're not moving forward related to the actor you're moving forward related to the control rotation of the pawn but the control rotation of the pawn in this particular case because we have this here use pawn control rotation right here is actually where the camera is looking so the forward vector right now of where the camera is looking is towards the front of mario but here would be to his left towards that big block there right that would be the forward vector of the camera so i press forward and he turns around that's exactly what's happening just as i suspected so i want to get the absolute uh vector direction um let me put it this way so i want this arrow here to rotate in the same direction that Mario is gonna rotate later but I wanted to do it immediately because there's this thing where like characters for example here uh, rotate slowly right so they have a rotation rate and let's say you have a rotation rate of 20 uh, I'm probably superseding it somewhere yeah I am so he's not gonna like really s turn that slowly um, but here there you see it so I'm pressing right or left uh, but he's not yet rotating right so i want to know as soon as possible what um, direction i'm actually pressing right i wanted to know within the same frame that the input is accepted right so i can do things like mario's still moving forward but i know i'm pressing backwards right i need to know this information for testing so this is uh, why i always do this i'm gonna show you the guys the code so i get the forward vector of the camera and i multiply it by move right sorry the right vector i normalize it of course to become so it becomes a direction for same for the forward vector i move forward i sum them up so let's say i have this one and this one i want to have this final point the combination of the two right this is vector math this is not very important right now but you know if you are a gameplay mechanics kind of guy you need to know this eventually uh so this is the arrow direction control i'm gonna set the world rotation towards that uh, just the rotation from the x vector this is like math style um just check it out but just believe me in this case <laughs> and then uh this return value is used for testing if there is actually an input so we'll come to this later but basically if there's anything being pressed 
it's not the vector coming out is not going to be zero because there's going to be a direction so if there's a direction there's always a magnitude however if nothing is being pressed no matter what this direction is multiplied by zero is going to be zero same here zero plus zero is zero so i will actually know later that i'm not pressing anything there's no button being pressed no di direction input being desired by the player okay so this is a super super useful function that i use like all the time um i definitely recommend that you learn it by heart uh okay so let's move on to the next things nothing on the construction script no needed let's close everything but tick we don't need this just yet this is uh we'll look at this later Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So let's start by the camera. That's actually something a little bit easier than the camera right now, which is related to movement, which is going to be this and this. I we'll get to that in a second. So there's two things that make the camera in Mario 64 quite unique. The whole Lakitu Brothers thing going on. Um, I want you to first notice um, that the camera is moving. Let's. I'm going to move it to the left of Mario, look to the towards the left of Mario, and I'm going to release the mouse. So the camera moves automatically towards the back of Mario. However, notice that it's moving on the jaw, but not on the pitch, which would be this, or the roll, obviously. We never want to move the roll of the camera unless very exceptional ex circumstances. This is happening automatically, okay? These are the Lakato brothers. They are doing that during the game. So, if you start moving like this, they will actually come towards the back. This is a very, very characteristic camera system of Mario 64, okay? I'm going to teach you how to do this right now. So, this is just one function and the tick. It needs to be on the tick, don't do it anywhere else. Um, because you need it to be running constantly, obviously. So, we are going to be doing several things here. The first one, let's see. Sorry, I forgot something. So not only that, but if you jump, you will notice that the camera looks when Mario is up like that. I don't know if I can pause here. No, I guess not. When Mario is up, the camera is looking up towards him. It rotates to look at him. And when he's down, it looks down to him. So basically, no matter where you put the pitch of the camera, the camera will follow Mario a little bit and you could say well that's just like the lag in the in the arm but actually it isn't because we do have lag here but you know that's actually not what's happening check it out so if i don't have lag sorry if i still have lag but i'm not looking at mario see what happens this is a very very typical uh <laughs> kind of like amateur camera where the camera is like going up and down because the the uh, camera boom has lag, but the camera doesn't rotate towards the player, so it looks weird. It looks like kind of like a you know a PlayStation 2 or PlayStation 1 era game, right? It's very very um, rigid. So that's actually what we're doing here. Notice the difference. Immediately you will notice it. The camera is. Let's imagine that the camera is at this level. Mario's here. I'm not the greatest artist in the world. That's why I'm not an artist. I'm not your doctor and I'm not an artist. So this is the camera. It's looking there. So if Mario jumps, the camera will rotate to look at him. And when Mario is not jumping, it also will rotate to look. Well, uh, it will rotate, Jesus, rotate to look at him. That's what we're doing here. 
how do we do that? Where, where is the camera right now? The camera, not the boom, the camera. Where is it? Now, where should we be looking? We will find a look, a rotation that gives us where to look. So what is this angle from between the point where the camera is, the thing that we're looking at, what is this angle here? That's what this function does. So where is the camera and where is Mario? And I'm adding 25 units. Let's see what would happen if I do 50. See, it's too low. So I'm looking at Mario's center. Oh, I don't remember if it's here right now, actually. Maybe it's here, it doesn't matter. But I'm adding 25 units, so it looks a little bit better. And then I'm finding this angle and I'm interpolating very important for you guys who are le just learning what uh, gameplay mechanics, how to program them. Interpolation is going to be your favorite thing in the world. Um, so we're going to smoothly rotate between where we're looking at now and where we want to look at this bit. Okay, this is how you construct this function. Just say get world, whoops, world delta seconds, you get it there. So anytime you see delta time, just do that. You don't need to get a variable from tick or something. That's what some people do. And then we're actually setting that world rotation for the follow camera, okay? So this thing here, depending where Mario is, is doing this or is doing that, okay? Cool. Now, on to the next thing. This doesn't seem to have a lot of sense here, uh, but... Um, Basically, what I'm doing is like the control rotation because of the camera boom using the control rotation is when you rotate the um, the mouse, it's going to tell this boom to rotate. I want to know if it's moving when it's looking forward, if it's the same as Mario's forward vector. So like the camera is looking in the same direction that Mario is looking. I don't want to continue doing what I'm going to do in a second, which is turn the back, the camera back. Why is that? Because if I keep doing it, even when he's starting to move, the camera will shake. See that? See that shaking? It's a bit difficult to see probably with the compression and all of that, but it's definitely there. Okay, so you don't want that. You want smoothness. So at some point, we stop doing what the rotation that we're going to do here. Also, if the player is moving the camera, so if I'm moving the mouse, the camera is not going to try to come back. As soon... Sorry, if I'm moving the mouse, yeah. The camera is not going to try to do anything. As soon as I release the mouse, the camera is going to try to come back. Even while I'm moving. So it's harder to see, but the camera is rotating. But it moves Mario, it makes Mario rotate because, well, that's how controls work here. So, um, so if I'm not moving the camera, I want to continue. And now we will get to this rotation, which is basically the same thing we did before. It's a uh, rotation interpolation between where the control rotation is right now, so where the camera rotation is. Remember that the control rotation can be many things, and in this case is the camera, uh, the boom of the camera, where it is right now, and where we want it to be, which is very similar to this, is, again, this is where we want to be. So let's say right now we're like this, we're going to have to make this rotation happen, okay? So this is where we are right now. This is our current. The target will be the rotation between where we're looking at now and where Mario is looking. Volt delta seconds and a speed. You can make it higher, you can make it lower, doesn't really matter. But after a certain point, if you make it too high, this happens. So you don't want that. And here's an important thing. We don't actually want to go exactly so how do I say this so if you just um, told the rotator let's see so we have this is where we want the camera to look but if we did this 
you have to realize that the forward vector of uh, the camera you might be looking like this right now and Mario is looking always like that you will also do this change of angle and that might be fine in some cases but that's not what Mario 64 does that's like some modern games do this for example so you see actually the pitch changes but that's not what Mario 64 does Mario 64 respects your pitch so what we do is we break the rotator we keep the current pitch and roll we don't want to alter those I mean not that the roll is going to change anyway this should always be zero but whatever um, and we always change the yaw in case you don't know what the roll pitch and yaw is uh, go check uh, six degrees of freedom and how planes work basically you know like the, the rotations so this will be jaw so like this is forward this is your right hand for example and this is up right so this rotation would be the jaw in this case well in every case actually uh, anyway so that's the first part of the camera if we took this out the camera would never come back and it wouldn't look at Mario okay you could you should in fact separate this function uh, this part of the function that looks at Mario actually well let's do it this is gonna be called rotate camera this is gonna be called look at Mario you should separate it okay encapsulate the, the things but it's gonna work the same unless I broke something by mistake nope it's all the same yep perfect so we have the look at Mario function and the rotate camera function and we know what those do now now uh, one more camera thing and then we can get into a little bit of movement and I will take a rest it's already over half an hour like I said guys this is gonna take like two or three hours it's gonna be a long one so uh, place boom on floor what does this one do huh, well I'm sure that's not intended let's read that the code oh because I'm gonna use this later for something yeah yeah, yeah I remember this so this one is the one that I was mentioning before that I don't remember exactly how I did the math I can explain more of it most of it but um, we're I'm definitely using this somewhere else for sure yeah there you are yeah for sure so I'm making a small coding mistake you could say that here because I'm using this variable in three different places you could make three traces that's a little bit expensive or you could take this out of this function and uh, that would be easier to read but anyway okay so right now um, what I'm gonna do is this let's see what happens Aha, uh -huh. yes, I know what's happening. Okay, I know what it does. So, as you can see here, the boom. So, if you guys don't know how boom works, basically when Mario moves, the boom is going to move with it. Right? And it can have a little bit of lag, so it looks like it doesn't move so much with him. Or it can be like this, right? Which is kind of like, it looks like, <laughs> uh, what's the game? Uh, Dark Siders a little bit. Um... So as you can see, the whole camera system is moving with Mario when he jumps. But that's not how it works in Mario 64. You could do this. You could do this in some types of games, you know. Uh, it looks fine for depending on what you're trying to do. But that's not what Mario does. What Mario does is the Lakitu brothers are like, kind of like, their own thing, you know. And they have their camera floating here. And Mario is jumping and doing their thing. But they don't change this height so much not really a little bit up and down but compared to how much mario can jump and move the change in their height is very low 
and what they do instead of is rotate the camera as we have seen before. So what that means is that I will have to make the boom stay closer to the floor than the, than I they would otherwise be. So usually what would happen is Mario jumps and the boom, the camera, moves with Mario, right? In this case, what we want is Mario jumps this much and the camera was here and now it jumps a little bit here. It moves a little bit and what it does is instead is rotate. So that's how they did it. Uh, so that's what we're gonna do here. Actually, no, don't close this. Okay. So for that, what we need is to do a trace. I don't care if it's for objects, for channel. I mean, in this case, it doesn't really matter. I think I did it this way. So it doesn't touch Mario or something like that. But I mean, you could just ignore that or whatever. Um, yeah, that's probably the reason. So it wouldn't touch itself. Uh, you can see the trace on there. It's this, uh, this capsule that he has here. And he's the point that the capsule touches. So another reason to use a capsule, most likely, is so this case. In that specific case, if it was a line trace, it would go all the down way down to the floor and uh, it wouldn't be as nice. Oh Jesus, go up. Well, doesn't matter, but you get the point. So, um, uh, here's a better example. So if it was a line trace there, the boom would go to the yellow floor. But that's not what Mario does in Mario 64. The boom stays kind of with him until he starts falling. Oh, here it goes. That's what would happen more easily if it was a line trace. Because it's a capsule, it takes longer to happen. So, um, so anyway, starts at the actor location, up vector, multiply by minus 50,000. Doesn't really matter, I mean, it can be minus thousand or whatever uh, it doesn't have, I mean if this is a minus this needs to be a plus I assume that you guys know how to use traces this is like basics you really really need to be good at this uh, let's clean that up and I'm saving two things the impact point uh, normal and I'll tell you guys what that does later it's basically for this kind of like slope I need to know that it's a slope later and the heat location. So where is the point that the floor is under Mario? I'm gonna get a direction. So the actor location minus the heat location. So let's say Mario is here. This is his location. This is the floor. And this is where the capsule does that. So I'm gonna subtract that. So I'm gonna get this vector with this magnitude and this um, because it's a walled location. So you know it could be any number. So I wanna have this magnitude of the vector with this direction. Well, mm, this direction, I guess. I'm gonna subtract 50 from that. So. Right now, the math escapes me a little bit. I think it's like this. I'm making it smaller, or like this, sorry. So instead of in the on the floor, I'm making it up a little bit from the floor. I'm negating the vector. This is the part that I don't remember why you have to do this right now. It's been a while, uh, but that's a good reason. I mean, let's, let's check what happens if I don't do it, but. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, right, right, <laughs> of course, of course, right, right, okay, that makes sense. So, Mario is in the air. And the... I know this vector magnitude, a little bit smaller, because of this minus 50. This is the vector, saying down. Well, actually, what it's doing is this. This is the direction. That's what the f why you I need to negate. Um, 
so the camera boom actually wants to be here so what I'm telling you hey get this vector turn it around like this and this will be and this distance get your relative transform which is this re the the uh, boom related to Mario not to the world to Mario and I want you to add or subtract really this distance to your relative location so I want you to go down here not exactly on the floor 50 units less from the floor and now I'm going to interpolate between the location where you are now and where the one that I want you to be and this will never happen because it happens every tick so it wouldn't actually get up here you know it would be like here then here then here then here then here right so anyway we're going to change the relative transform the location so in effective terms what would happen is this Woo. instead of changing it in the wall we're changing it within the actor and we are going to interpolate between the current location that location that we wish for this one and we're going to set it up and we're going to teleport uh, we don't want collisions we don't want anything to mess with our movement there and as you can see it looks beautiful uh, the, I don't know if it's Miyamoto coded this or who coded this you know that uh, it's hard to know sometimes who coded what but uh, whoever decided this <laughs> that's a really good idea that's very very smart uh, especially back then you know it's like nowadays like well okay let's do this let's do that because we've seen it in 12 different games but back then there were no games to compare to you know, it's like Mario 64 was groundbreaking in these things so i believe that's over 40 minutes yeah 42 minutes already i'm gonna call this part one um i hope it is useful for you guys that you learned something again it's super humbling that you guys are asking me to do this uh, i'm sorry that like i can't take more time to do it it's like uh yeah i'm a professional game designer i'm always looking at code and you know it's like it's not much that you revisit old code that being said i'm kind of happy with this code you know it's like it takes me a little bit to understand right now because i haven't looked at it in a year but i think it's pretty clear what it does and it's clean this shouldn't be here but most of the times it's clean on the next part i will look into jumping um, this part of movement like this which is quite interesting why he moves like that if there's a little bit of speed and why he moves like this if there's no speed which is awesome it's really interesting it's this code if you guys wanna look at it already but um how to do wall jumps how to change the jump height gravity etc depending on which jump it is because there's several types of jumps uh how to do the sliding might probably be in like a third part or something like that which includes this oh ha. okay i have to change something on the animation blueprint it shouldn't that's why the animation blueprint he didn't have this uh, he didn't have this bit here because this bit needs actually to be Well, what I can do is I can probably change this. Let's see. Let's try to change this already. So for the third part, you guys have it better than it was. Mm. Okay, I'll have to look at it uh, later. But this is the sliding of, uh, you know, that's the crouching I'll probably have to add a little bit of code there but um, yeah so probably on the third part uh, I'll show you guys the sliding the sliding jumps I don't know if it will we'll get to that on the second uh, second part I'm gonna try to keep each part less than one hour because otherwise no one's gonna have the patience to watch it 
and yeah jumping sliding things little tricks like this probably on the third on the third one and just to finish this one with a little bit of uh, things to uh, get out of the way for this uh, jump particles if you guys want to get it uh, done it's super easy white material there's a little bit of like a normal uh, I mean, but not that it does much anyway and I just spawn this particle when he's walking this one when he lands and this when he does a wall jump and there's nothing special about them it's just like you know some uh, meshes like some spheres spawning and decreasing in size and all of that not in opacity surprisingly and yeah that's about it let me see how I um, spawn it ah okay of course this is uh, notifies yeah, for particles easy peasy cool I uh, really hope that you guys enjoyed that that uh, you learned something and uh, you kind of like get a impression of how I think about these things you know I mean it's mostly like as you could see a lot of uh, vector math and like figuring out uh, you know directions and magnitudes and stuff like that but it's not too math heavy hopefully I mean if I can do it and I'm I completely ignorant of these things you know of math and stuff like that if I can do it almost anyone can do it um, yeah and I hope it uh, you know showed you something and uh, that you guys enjoyed and uh, thank you very much for watching thank you very much for all your messages of support and you know asking for the tutorial and all of that uh, over the last year it's been quite humbling and I'll see you guys on the next one thank you